time it looked like underwear. This time it looks like a bikini, a really tiny bikini. Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and this is Birch and Lily where I talk about all of the crafty stuff that I have been up to over the past couple weeks. Today is August 15th, 2022 and I have lots of fun stuff to show you. A couple of finished objects, maybe what I'm wearing, <laughs> um, a couple new cast-ons, all sorts of fun stuff that I've been working on over the past little while. There are a couple places you can find me on the internet, the main one being birchandlilyfiber.com. You can also find me on Instagram and Ravelry, and now as well on Patreon. I have decided to create a Patreon. The link for that will be down below. I won't go into that too much, but if you are interested in uh, supporting me monthly for about the price of a cup of coffee, I would love if you would check out my Patreon. I'm going to be posting a lot of exclusive and uh, early stuff on my Patreon, so definitely check that out if you're interested. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already, and let's jump into the video. So I'm going to make you wait a tiny bit uh, to talk about this sweater and show you a pair of socks that I finished first. These cute socks are the Summer Picnic Socks. It's a pattern by This Handmade Life. I did these in the 56 stitch size. Um, I could not tell you any of this yarn. I just grabbed a whole bunch of stuff from my scrap bin. This pattern is definitely fantastic for using up scraps. I'm even contemplating doing a pair that's like a full length with a bunch of scraps. I think that would be super, super cute, and it really wouldn't be that hard to do at all. I did the 56 stitches on this. All I did was a one by one twisted rib, um, and I knit that, I think this pair of socks, I did 10 rounds for it and then moved straight into the heel flopping gusset and did the patterning as the pattern suggested. Um, this pattern has great charts and instructions on what to do for these socks. So if you haven't knit a lot of color work before, I think it might take a little bit of, like you'd have to read everything before you started. But after that, it's really not that hard to follow. It's not that complicated of a color work pattern in the slightest. Um, so yeah, I did that. And I think I did the cold for toe in the pattern as well, just like a typical wedge toe. But these are so cute. I'm definitely contemplating knitting a couple more pairs, maybe some for people for Christmas. They knit up so fast. Anything color work, I find, I just fly through because it's so much fun. Um, I should mention as well, you're never working with more than two colors at a time. So if that's something that makes you nervous, like if make, working with three colors at a time makes you nervous, you don't have to do that in this pattern. Only two colors ever at a time. Um, but yeah, I think they're a really great stash buster. So I think I might have to cast on some more pairs in the future. So like I said, um, I was making you wait a little bit, but I won't make you wait too long. I have a finished object. This pattern here is the Briar and Bramble sweater by Caitlin Hunter, and I love it so much. I think it blocked out so nicely. It's super cute, super cozy. Anyways, let's jump into the sweater. Uh, so I did knit this out of Birch and Lily Fiber Co. on the Birch DK base, which is 100% superwash merino, and this colorway here is walnut. And yeah, isn't this cute? I'm not gonna stand up. I should have put different pants on, but I have like super cozy biker shorts on and I don't wanna show those on the camera. So this shows the sweater pretty well, I think. Um, I did knit a size three for this. I should also say the pattern has not released yet, um, but I know we had to be done by the 22nd of August. So it's either releasing on the 22nd or a couple days after the 22nd. But um, two by two rib on the collar. Uh, it is a raglan shaping. Um, and I think it's really neat how it's got the ribbing on the raglan. And if you notice, it goes all the way down the sleeve and it also goes all the way down <laughs> the side of the body. And then it just has a plain ribbed hem as well. So yeah, uh, it's not a complicated pattern at all. I would say it uses up a lot of yarn. If you can see, I have to cover my face so the camera focuses, um, but it has this neat yarn over texture, but I know I found and a lot of the testers found that it ate up a lot of yarn, um, but I think it's worth it. I think it's really cute. It makes it extra warm and I feel, I don't know, it's really comfy and cozy and also covered in dog fur. 
because I own a dog and apparently even if a sweater is freshly made, it's still going to be covered in dog fur. Let's be honest, I probably knit dog fur into it. Um, but beautiful pattern. Uh, let me check my notes. Yeah, I don't, I don't have to, oh, actually no, I do. There is something else special about this pattern. Um, so the pattern is written and I didn't do all, all of the embroidery, but it's written so that there's spots on it that you're able to put embroidery. So I did that and I'm going to be honest. I hope you can see it somewhat. I don't know how I feel about it. I think it's the color. I think the color is too much and I'm kind of hoping or my, my brain is wanting something slightly more subtle. So I'm thinking about ripping it out and doing something either in the same color as a sweater, like embroidering some little flowers in the same color, or just doing something in like a little bit lighter of a brown. Um, Cause I don't know, I, I just feel like it stands out too much. Now it is behind my hair. So most of the time you won't see it, but I'm still not sure. So let me know what you think. Maybe you have better ideas than I do. Um, I'm not sure if Caitlin is going to include um, like a tutorial of how she did hers or she's just going to include photos or what. When we got the pattern, there was no information for the embroidery in it. It was more of just a do what you think. So I'm not sure if that's going to be included in the pattern. Um, but yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. But I love the rest of it. I feel like the fit is perfect. I feel like a size three for me was the perfect fit. Um, oh, something else. I had to make the sleeve shorter. Um, I think I ended up stopping two decreases early and just doing a rapid decrease to the cuff because otherwise these sleeves would have been to like there on me. <laughs> So I did stop the sleeves early. Um, I think there was two different decrease sections. I think the second one for the size three called to do it 10 times and I did it eight times. That would lead to. So yeah. Um, but otherwise, really, really cute. And I think you should knit it when it comes out because I think it's cute. I'm loving DK weight sweaters. <laughs> um, I have one garment on my needles right now? Yes, one, which I'm going to show you, which is not DK weight, but I think I might cast on a second garment that is DK weight or find another test knit because I'm really liking doing test knits. We'll see. <laughs> um, let's be honest, I have started applying for test knits a lot more often than I used to, so if I cast something else on, I may end up doing another test knit again, but we'll see. I should keep it to no more than two at a time. Hold me to it. Anyways, um, I think that's all I have to say about my briar and bramble. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me down below in the comments. Um, and if you would like yarn dyed up for a kit for it, or I know I showed the Alley sweater last episode, which is releasing soon. I think that one's coming out September 2nd. Um, let me know. I'd love to dye you up a kit. I do have a new collection coming soon. I'm going to be sneak peeking a color today. The test knit I'm doing is in said color. I haven't named it yet though, but uh, that will be coming pretty soon. So keep your eye out for an announcement for the fall collection as well. Um, but let's jump into my works in progress. I'm talking kind of fast today. I hope that's okay. Um, so I have, I think three out of the four of these are new cast ons. Um, I started working on some socks. I have two pairs of socks that I've been working on. The first one is in this bag um, and I'm working on, well, I'm using the Hibernation House Sock Pattern from Lindsay Fowler kind of as my base for it, but I've changed a lot. Um, so <laughs> this is what I have here. This really funny, actually, since I remembered to bring a sock blocker, why don't I put it on a sock blocker? It's technically not the right size sock blocker, but it should hopefully maybe help some if I put it on the right way, not with the heel on the top. Oh dear. Okay, so yeah, it doesn't fit it perfectly because it's not the right size sock blocker, but this gives you an idea. Um, so with the Hibernation House sock pattern, it calls for you to do a one by one twisted rib. 
um, but I ended up doing a two by two. So what I did was I held the main color and some Surrey alpaca double to do this cuff. I knit it twice what this length was and then folded it over and connected it and got rid of the Surrey and now I'm just knitting the foot without the Surrey. I don't want to give too much away. That was like a really convoluted explanation. Anyways, uh, so cuff is folded over double with the Surrey so it's nice and cozy and then now I'm working on the foot. Um, again, I'm not following the pattern for the foot at all. I did a slip stitch heel flap and gusset and on the top of the foot, um, I don't know if you can see the texture there, all I'm doing is knitting two rounds with knit one purl one and then the next two rounds are purl one knit one and then I'm just doing that back and forth. So it's just making a really pretty texture. I think these are cute. So these are a Christmas gift. They're for my mom. She knows they're for her already. She bought the yarn. Um, she purchased this yarn, well, just the main color, not the Surrey. I had that in my scrap yarn. Um, but she purchased this main yarn and asked me to knit her a pair of socks out of it. So I'm doing such. So let me show you this yarn. Did I say I cast on 64 stitches for those? Um, I probably didn't. But those are a 64 stitch pair of socks and yarn. So the Surrey that I'm using is from Sugar Plum Circus Yarn. This colorway is Sea Glass. I swear I've been using this for so many projects lately. I had two skeins of it and um, I ended up only using the one. I thought the pattern I was going to use it for I would need two. I only used the one and maybe slightly broke into the second one. Not very much. Um, so then I've just been using this for a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, but it's beautiful. And then the main color I'm using is a commercial self-striping yarn. I'll show you the ball band here. Uh, so it's Diamond Select Winter Flower and it is color number eight. So I, I really like it. It's not as soft as like a superwash merino. What is the content of this even? Oh, okay. It says a 75% wool, like a superwash wool and 25% polyamide. So it doesn't say the type of wool. Um, so yeah, it's not as soft as my typical superwash, but it's fine. And it's, the pattern is really cute on it. Um, so yeah, I've been working on those. Christmas knitting has begun. I have my typical list of people that I always knit socks for. Um, so I'm slowly carving away at those. Should we uh, go into my current test knit that y'all haven't seen? Um, I finished the project that was in my Brooklyn Haberdashery bag, so now this one has moved into it. This is my favorite knitting bag. It's so wonderful. It just, it looks so cute and it doesn't, well, not that I care about carrying around a knitting bag, but it kind of looks a little less like I'm carrying around a knitting bag. So I am test knitting the Miles T. This is a pattern that will be coming pretty soon from Ozetta. And this is that yarn that I was telling you about, which is showing relatively accurately on camera for once, maybe a little bit lighter than it actually is in person. But like I said, this has no name yet, but this will be a part of the new fall collection. Um, I won't tell you the theme or anything yet, but Here's a sneaky peek. I dyed this up and I couldn't help myself and had to cast on this pattern in it. So I dye, I, I took everything I had dyed and stole it for this tea and I'll have to dye another uh, batch of it <laughs> for the collection. Um, I don't have a release date or anything yet, but keep your eyes peeled. It shouldn't be too long. Anyways, like I said, I have cast on the Miles Tea by Ozetta coming to you soonish. <laughs> um, and I just joined the body together today, so that's pretty exciting. It doesn't really look like much yet, um, but you can see I've totally revamped, well, now it's washing out because I'm holding it close, but I've totally revamped my tonal dyeing, and I'm so happy with how this looks. This is the prettiest tonal I think I've ever dyed, and I'm so pleased. So the whole collection is going to have my new style of tonal in it, and I'm really excited to get it into you guys' hands. Anyways, I'll stop plugging myself, <laughs> but I am knitting this out of a fingering weight yarn, 80-20, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and if you turn it around, this is what really sucked me in. Look at that lace detail. 
on the back. Isn't that super cute? So the pattern is really simple. It's not terribly complicated at all. Uh, most of it is stockinette minus this little lace section here. And then the bottom has a really cute curved hem. Um, I'm sure I'll have popped a photo on the screen of what that looks like, but it's a really pretty curved hem. And I think the shape is going to look really beautiful once I wear it, once it's on my body. <laughs> um, but yeah, so not, not tons to say, but it's got a beautiful curved neckline. Um, and then it's dropped shoulder, so they'll sit about here-ish on me, and then it'll have about sleeves to my elbow or so. So I think it will be a perfect, like, it'll still be warm for the winter, but not as warm, obviously, as something like this. So loving working on this. I've also been loving seeing everyone else's test knits. I think I'm one of the few people that chose to do a color. A lot of people are doing more, like, neutrally stuff. Um, so I'm excited to kind of see how mine looks compared to other people's, how the neutral ones turn out. Um, Bethany from Mulberry Fabrico is doing a beautiful, beautiful, ugh, I wish I could, I'd record on my phone and I wish I didn't because then I could like hold my phone up. Um, but the color she's chosen, and I can't remember the name of it, it's one of, I think it's one of her yarns, but it's just beautiful. Um, and uh, there's a couple people knitting it out of, um, cause of course I'm going to blank on it now. Um, is it Brooklyn Tweed? Brooklyn Tweed? Is that a brand? I hope that's a brand. I think it's Brooklyn Tweed. Um, but there's a couple people knitting it out of that as well. But it only uses, I'm knitting a size three. Three? Two or three? Did I write it down? Size three. <laughs> Check your notes, Amanda. Um, but I only need three skeins of fingering white yarn, which is pretty darn reasonable as well. Um, so look for that pattern coming soon. I'm really enjoying the knit. Um, it's really mindless. So that's been a lot of fun. Uh, one other garment I'm working on. Did I say I was only working on one? I'm working on two. Um, also, I am working on my Remy camisole. This is a pattern by Kadri. And last time it looked like underwear. This time it looks like a bikini, a really tiny bikini. Now, this is gonna grow like crazy because it's ribbed. So once I block it, it will grow like nobody's business. But right now, it looks like an itty bitty bikini. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm looking at myself on the monitor because it just looks ridiculous. Um, but I have joined the whole thing together. I'm now knitting in the round. I, I don't know what length of cable this is. I'm gonna assume it's a 40 inch, um, but I did order a 24 inch cable so that I'll be able to um, knit it without having to do magic loop because right now I'm having to do magic loop and it's just taking the fun away. <laughs> There's so many ends on this thing too. I should almost weave in some of them now um, before I get any further because every single one of these triangles is, well, you knit one triangle and then you connect the second triangle to it and then you do it again and then you connect them all together. So that just makes for a ton of ends. And I'm gonna have to weave all of them in. But I'm knitting this also out of Birch and Lily Fiber Co. Uh, the Fingering Weight Base 8020 Superwash Merino. This colorway is succulent. And I love the color. I'm really excited to wear it. Um, again, I think this will be a nice, well, I could probably get away with it on a cooler spring day, but also in the winter with a cardigan over top of it, I think this will be nice and cozy once it's blocked and doesn't look like a small child's bikini. So yeah, I'm knitting a size two for this. I picked based off of what the pattern called for and it does call for a lot of negative ease. Um, I'm sure you'll have seen the photo I popped up, but it is a much more form fitting garment than the Miles T or than this here, the uh, Briar and Bramble sweater. So that is my bikini. I think last time I only had, yeah, obviously I only had one half of it done because it looked like underwear. Oh man. The things we do for our knitting. So this is going to be a little bit shorter of an episode today, mostly because this last item, I cannot show you the project itself. It's a secret test knit for a pair of socks. 
but I want to show you the yarn because the yarn is really cute. Um, I pulled this out of deep, deep stash. I have the largest collection of Blueberry Fiber Co. yarn and sock sets and just everything imaginable. She's my favorite dyer. Anyways, I pulled this sock set for the test knit and I thought I would show it off. It's super pretty. This is called Hearth. I can't remember when this came out. At one point I was labeling all of my ball bands with like when I had purchased it or what year I had purchased it. Um, but mostly only on club colorways and this is not one of those. So I don't know when I got it. But I'm assuming it was a wintry fall colorway by the name. Um, but super cute. I wish I could show you how it's knitting up. But it fits in this bag beautifully. And I almost have, well, let me show you. I won't show you the color work, but I'll peek out some of it. <laughs> That's the back. So you can see how the color's knitting up. It's really pretty. And it matches this bag so well. I love when bags match well. So, working on that. And then, one other exciting acquisition. I had a surprise come in the mail today. Perfectly timed from my dear friend Tracy at Grizzly Knits, whom I... I'm so glad I did that uh, make along with both her and I had never done a make along before. So I'm glad that both of us did it together and went in really blindly <laughs> with the Bloom Baby Bloom make along. It was super fun to do that with you, Tracy, and I'm so glad we did it. Um, but she spoiled me with a little special something. Look at this packaging. It's so cute. I'm keeping this. I don't know what I'm doing with it, but I'm keeping it because it's adorable. But she sent me, well, of course, a cute little note, which I also am probably going to hoard. But the cutest little Progress Keeper and Stitch Marker set. Look at this. Guys, if you have not checked out her shop, first of all, I'll make sure it's linked down below. Um, but this is just adorable. And it's all like total me colors. Blue, teal. It's so cute. I'm so excited. I should put this actually, I'm going to have to put it on one of my projects. I'm going to figure out which one needs more uh, stitch markers <laughs> and put it on that one. But so cute. And her packaging is just gorgeous. So thank you so much, Tracy. I, I'm so appreciative. I'm so thankful. This is the sweetest, sweetest thing ever. And I'm so glad it showed up in the mail today so that I could show it on this episode. Um, but yeah, that is all I have for this episode. I'm sorry it's not the longest one in the world, but now it gives you more time to go watch other people's podcast episodes. Um, I'm so thankful. It's getting cooler outside. Like I said, I'm gonna go photograph this sweater now. Or did I say that? Anyways, I'm gonna go photograph this sweater now so I have finished object photos. So I'm thankful it's cooling down because <laughs> when I took my alley sweater and my home sweater v-neck photos, I almost died. So I'm glad it's cooling down and I can take some pretty photos of this. I also haven't taken photos of my uh, Gaia sweater. So I'll probably get some photos of this as well. I still don't have a release date for this. I contacted the designer, but I haven't got a response. So I'm not sure when that is releasing yet. If you're interested in that, I'll try and let you know probably on Instagram. But yeah, I'm excited. Like I said, that it's cooling down so I can do stuff like this <laughs> so I can get outside in the yard more, um, take my dog for walks again because when it's 30 plus degrees, it's not great for her to go on a walk. So looking forward to the coming of fall. I'm ready for fall. <laughs> Anyways, I will stop rambling. Thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do that and hit the like button. Check out my Patreon if you are interested in supporting me a little extra. I would appreciate it very much, and I will see you again in two weeks. Bye!